Welcome to our monthly virtual lecture. As a reminder, this lecture is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel uh, in the coming days. My name is Christopher Davis, and I'm pleased to announce our speaker today, Dominique Foyer, who is one of our scientific programmers. Today, uh, Dom's going to show you how to get started with our Python API, GOH5Pi. This API will allow users to read and write to GOH5 for format uh, through Python. Most of what Dom's showing today is valid for uh, the version 3.1, which has been released. Although I've heard that he may give us a sneak peek on what's coming in version 3.2. If you have yet to download version 3.1, this is your friendly reminder that you can find it on our website at miragiosciencecom If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in the Q&A or raise your hand. Please be aware that Dom may wait till the end to answer the question. Dom, take it away. Hi, thanks, Chris, and everyone who's taking the time to uh, to join them. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is basically the first uh, public talk that we give on uh, about the GOH5 Pi. Um, and um, I guess before we dive into writing code or whatever, I thought I would um, I would just give a one or two intro slides just to motivate um, exactly why we we wrote this uh, this library, right? So. If you're here, you probably know about Geoscience Analyst. Um, it's been around for a few years already. And um, the mission of Geoscience Analyst is uh, really to have a uh, powerful 3D viewer uh, that is uh, free, lightweight, and that can handle a wide variety of uh, geoscientific data, like line, point curves, uh, block meshes, uh, all that, and to be able to import it from different uh, file formats, right? So this is the main mission of Geoscience Analyst and it keeps improving and new features keeps, uh, keep to be, uh, to be adding. Um, and then Analyst sits on top of a uh, file format called GOH5, which is basically uh, an HDF5 uh, format that we've structured so that we can store all those uh, geoscientific objects, right? Point curves, surfaces, all that. Um, and then obviously our insatiable users uh, quickly um, started to ask for new features to be added um, because it's great to be able to um, have data stored in that format and then be able to share it uh, but then pretty quickly people wanted to be able to manipulate the data uh, export it take it take it out of analyst um, and so this is kind of like counter to like the original mission of analyst to be a light uh, free viewer right so uh, here the idea is that uh, maybe we can just uh, create a little layer between uh, all the open source codes that could do all the processing that people want to do um, and have this uh, be able to be access point basically uh, in and out of the GOH5 uh, format. And this is, this is where GOH5 uh, sits. Uh, eventually other languages could be, uh, could be connecting to GOH5, but right now we started with, uh, with Python uh, just because of the, uh, the active uh, community. And then once we have access to the data, then we can start doing some more complicated uh, things like creating little applications where we can interactively uh, extract and manipulate the, uh, the data. And that's, that's kind of what I was thinking I would show you today. Um, I recently started uh, working with, uh, with a colleague of mine, JP, who asked me, hey, it would be great if we could just cluster data in, uh, in geoscience uh, analysts. So this is basically, I'll take you through the thought process that we had, you know, we spent a few minutes thinking about it, putting down some code, and then I uh, see if with uh, how, how possible um, would that be, how, how easy uh, would that be. Okay, so I have a, um, I'm just gonna turn this guy off. So here I have a, just a basic notebook, Jupyter notebook, I will share this with you, I'll put, put a link up with data so you can reproduce this talk at home. Uh, but basically right now it's a few links to the libraries that we'll, we'll need. So GOH5 Pi obviously, and then we'll use scikit-learn for the, the k-means uh, k clustering. Uh, so what the notebook uh, first, if you, if you have a plain anaconda and you haven't installed anything, you might just wanna run this line here, which will download and install. <laughs> obviously it's not the first time I run this demo, so Everything is already uh, satisfied, so it's okay, all good, and I'm just gonna import a few of uh, those libraries in, uh, in my notebook. Okay, so the entry point to Analyst um, is the GOH5, 
so you can either connect to one or create one here. I'm just going to create a fresh uh, workspace. Workspace, and I'm going to call it, uh, let's say, project.uh file. Okay. And because my uh, notebook is sitting on my uh, desktop, as soon as I uh, enter this line, you see it just created a brand new uh, GOH5 file here. I'm going to open this just to show you what's inside. And obviously, there's not going to be anything inside like this. So it's just a blank, just a blank project, right? So if I uh, if I'm here and I ask uh, if I ask the list uh, list objects, it's just going to return an empty dictionary because there's nothing in it. All right, so let's load some data because data is everything. So I have, I'll, I'll give you this uh, CSV file, which uh, contains basically XYZ coordinates and then geochem, uh, geochem data, okay? So it's pretty straightforward. If you're already an analyst uh, user, there should be no surprise, just drag and drop and then be able to display and uh, display your data, okay? So in order to be able to talk to it, so currently this only sits in memory to be able to uh, access it, I need to save my project. So by saving it now, this uh, geocam is now uh, on, my, on my hard drive. And so if I just refire this line here, now instead of creating a new project, it's gonna connect to it. And again, if I, if I ask to list all my objects, it's telling me that I have a geocam, uh, geocam uh, point set. Okay, so I'm just gonna get it out. So points will be a get entity, and I'm just gonna call it by name uh, geocam, like this. Okay, so by default, uh, points uh, right now, if you're a Python user, you see it's a list, and there's a, only one item in, in the list, and the reason for this is that you could have multiple uh, geocam multiple entities named geocam. So I'm just gonna grab the first, the first one. And this is a points and a points object. A uh, points object has properties. So you can, you can view all the properties that it's associated with that. Once an important one are obviously the vertices. So there we go. Those are the coordinates of all my points. Um, so on top of this, the, this geocam uh, points object has data. So I can ask them my points to, uh, to get, uh, get the list of data, it's a function. So here's the list of all the data that are, that are inside. I can get the data out by just saying data will be equal to points that get data. And I'm just gonna grab one, the one that's in camera right now, it's aluminum oxide, like this. And it's gonna be a list again, so I'm just gonna return it. First index, and now data is a type float. All right, so uh, data float objects have values. There we go. So pretty quickly, right, I have now points in 3D space and values. And then if you wanted to simply export it back to as a CSV, you could just do a save to text and just say my points. That. And then just create a NumPy array of uh, points, the vertices, and then some data values. I do this on my desktop, I should have a file called my points of that. Well, I guess I didn't spell it right. There we go, my points that that, and that's basically just a, a CSV. Okay, so in, uh, within uh, less than, a, if you were an expert, less than a minute, you could export uh, any data out of the GOH5 to be able to uh, bring it to a different, different software. Now let's do something slightly more interesting. Let's do some uh, some clustering. Um, this is a, this was our first initial task, right? So uh, here I'm going to use the uh, scikit-learn package. Uh, if you go to the to their web page, you have uh, the clustering. You have many methods you could use. Um, yours to to try. I'm going to go for the easy one, the k-means. There's more documentation of what the k-means can do. Okay. All I want here is just a small example, so I can. I can steal some, some code, how to use it. So how you use it is simply these lines, right? So I, I'll need a matrix of data and then I'll do a k-means fit on it. So I'm just gonna copy this 
I'll say thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, scikit-learn, for providing the free code. And all I need to create here is a matrix X, right? So let's just do this. Let's just create a, um, let's create a list of labels. Okay, and I'm gonna steal a few labels here. Uh, let's say, uh, let's do silver, aluminum oxide, this, and maybe some, uh, I don't know, that's interesting, CO I think is interesting. I know the GeoKMS, this is just numbers for me, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay, and let's just create a matrix X. Oops, matrix X, meaning to list, and then for label, and label. Just like that, and I'm gonna steal this guy here, right here, and I want the values. And once that's done, I'm just gonna concatenate it into a uh, to a uh, matrix. So I'm gonna do a V stack of X, and I'm gonna transpose it. That should do it. Okay. So now I have a matrix that is n by um, um, n by three number of uh, number of columns. Oh, I guess it's all the same values because I have to change my labels here. That's better. Okay, so now we can do our clustering, run this, and now the cluster spits out labels for those points. This is this is all right, uh, but I would like to see it in three D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a new uh, floating point object called cluster, and it's going to be uh, added to the, to, the, to the points, to those points, right? So I'm gonna add data. You could add multiple data at the same time. Here, I'm just gonna add one called cluster. I'm gonna put some values on it. And then it's gonna be my k-means labels. This guy here, like this. And as soon as I return this, what the GeoH5 file will do is write those new points to the GeoH5, um, and then uh, we'll be able to see them. It should work. Okay. Now, uh, because uh, it's a the camera here is currently only looking at what's in memory, I need to be able I need to refresh my workspace uh, to be able to see uh, the new property. A new property named cluster is, is here. And then there we go, we've clustered data using open source, open source code. Uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, if, you, uh, if you guys are bored, you can go. Uh, otherwise, I can uh, show you the future. Um, the future is, future is quite bright. I think it, it, it's pretty exciting. So currently I'm running version 3.2 alpha, which is not a version that is, uh, that is released yet. But if you're a pro user, and once this version is released, you'll have this new monitoring folder. And what this does is that uh, it allows us to communicate directly with the, with the active session of analyst and then send information uh, to it, right? So without having to do the, the refresh. So I have a folder here that sits on my, on my hard drive. And instead of having to do uh, to do to do the refresh, I'm going to let's do uh, let's do another clustering. Let's do like a three clusters instead, so that we see the difference. Okay, and I'm going to um, change the values of clusters. Clusters of values will be the new one. Key means that labels. Okay, so if, right now, okay, if I if I don't use the uh, the live link, if I just run this. And I do a workspace that finalize. It will change the values and update the workspace. Okay, I'm just going to show it to you again. I'll update camera, cluster, and now I have three clusters. Okay, but I would like to avoid doing this. It's a bit annoying. I would like to be able to feed information directly to analyst. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to copy this. But then I will simply create a copy of my points and then send it to a temporary parent. Basically, I'll create a temporary workspace that I'll throw in this folder and then I'm just gonna see that there's a new something and it will digest it directly. Okay, so I'm gonna create, I'm gonna grab the path of this here and I'm going to create a new workspace. I will trick it. I'll put my path here. 
I'm going to call this uh, temp of geo h5. The name doesn't matter. So as soon as I run this line, it will copy the points with the new property, and then Anna is going to see it, and then it will digest it. Hopefully, it works. I'm not sure if uh, Zoom will will have the refresh rate to be able to see it, but let's see what happens. I'm just going to put this down here. Let's see if you can see the change. Okay, well, I didn't change the number of clusters, so that's not interesting. Let's just put it to four. Now I run up. There we go. So now we have an, an instantaneous change to the uh, to the camera. Let me just do it again. I don't think uh, I don't think you'll see this part, uh, but you have to trust me. Basically, GOH5 I dumped a, a, a small file here, and analyst took it out. Okay, so I'm just going to do another one of five like this. There we go. So now I just need to switch my, my colors. And now you can see that I have, I have more groups. And then you could use that analyst to be able to slice, to be able to see which, you know, which colors, uh, which clusters are, are where in, in 3D space. Pretty cool. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, go for it. Um, yeah. What, what's the best uh, place to find documentation and perhaps a tutorial for GOH5Pi? Yeah, so we have docs. Um, I put the link uh, when you get the, the notebook, uh, you can have it. But basically, if you Google GOH5Pi, uh, we have uh, documentation. Um, so all the modules and all the core libraries are in here. You can read it, but there's a small user guide. Right, that will tell you kind of like the basic functions of how to create a workspace, uh, what all the objects are, what they can do, with some uh, some small examples. So, yeah. Great, thanks, Dom. That was no uh, that was excellent. I think I might have to learn Python now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's an intro. But that's a, that's a good start. <laughs> so, thanks for everyone who joined us today. Um, for those of you who are still in this lecture. Uh, We'll give you about a half a minute to type any other questions you may have. Uh, if you have any questions in the future, please do not hesitate to email us at support at miragiosciencecom And we look forward to seeing you next month. Um, hey, it's my turn. When yours truly will be performing potential field inversion on a geologic model within Geoscience Analyst Pro Geophysics. Uh, there's two questions. Um, one, does the GeoH5 format implement compression? It I does, guess. yeah. No, yes. sorry, it does. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> yes, so the answer is yes, it does. And will the live link work to view iterations of an active EM or potential fields inversion? Um, and I think I can also answer that one. Um, so basically, if you are linked anytime that uh, the GOH5 is actually changed, um, it would uh, it would update. So basically, if you have something like, say, in SIMPEG and things are constantly updating, if you can hook that up to the GOH5 to write it, then it will automatically update an analyst. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I would just, before my time is up, uh, if people would like to visit, because we have a, another website, another library called the Geo, Geo Apps, and this is where we're exposing uh, more, uh, more advanced uh, applications that we built using GOH5 by. And then if you guys have ideas, things that you would like to do, and maybe you don't have the, the skills to right away to, to do it, but if you have a good idea and you want to implement it pretty quickly, just contact us and then uh, we, can, we can bring it in. Uh, some of those apps are pretty diverse and then we'll keep, keep adding along the way. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. <laughs>